So welcome to Asheville. I hope you guys uh, make it downtown. Our co-op's not that far from here. But um, I'm here to tell you that Asheville is possibly the most saturated uh, natural food market in the entire country, which could mean the world. And that's per capita. So we have two Whole Foods, two Earth Fairs, Trader Joe's, three Hoppy and Company. Um, that is a salvage operation that features natural food. Um, a local conventional supermarket chain that does natural and organic very well with private label. And we just had a local uh, independent competitor close its doors, possibly because of uh, market saturation. So five years ago, things looked bleak for the co-op. Um, we were possibly going to close our doors. Uh, but we've since experienced rapid sales growth, uh, rapid gains in ownership levels. Uh, we became living wage. Uh, we own the land we stand on, we're debt free, and we are po uh, planning an expansion in what is the single biggest plot of land in downtown Asheville. Development is uh, currently going up all around us, on three sides of us. So my message to you in this uh, what it takes to thrive in a competitive landscape is to stand tall and know that we actually are what everybody else is pretending to be. Locally, locally owned, community oriented. It's, we're actually community assets that can't be sold off at the whim of powerful investors. We need to leverage our cooperative principles, all seven that go back to Rochdale. Um, but we especially need to live by them. Remind our coworkers daily, the public as much as possible, about the larger implications of this cooperative business model. The International Cooperative Alliance um, points out that ra raising public awareness is the highest priority. Our greatest advantage, they say, is that we don't have to create the story. We are the story in communities around the world. So here are some things that have worked for us. Um, I don't want to act like we got it all covered. We're constantly trying to improve every day, and we still have lots of areas for improvement. Uh, we turned 40 this year. So I base this around our ENDS policies. You know, more and more corporations are bragging about a triple bottom line. We have five. So uh, the first one, financial health. Uh, the key to me is to operate lean, but effectively. A lean, nice co-op machine. That means everybody needs to be able to jump in if needed, from the top to the bottom. Labor is your only controllable expense. So hiring cautiously is well worth it. Um, you need to be financially nimble so you can react quickly to market forces, whatever they may be, trends, hot topics, news, et cetera. So everyone in the organi organization needs to be actively involved in selling food. Um, too often, managers can make the center of attention the back room where they're talking to people and carrying out orders, um, even the general manager. So make sure the sales floor is the center of activity. And if people's lips are moving, their hands should be moving. Cleaning, moving product. And I say that because that's what makes work really fun. And a workplace needs to be a fun, productive atmosphere. But you need to monitor your sales per labor hour very closely, because um, you don't want to hire unless you necessarily you absolutely have to, and on the other side of that coin is if you don't have enough labor and, and customers are streaming in, it can create bad customer experiences. So that's where you need the leadership team to be able to shadow and jump in and jump on the register and not necessarily have that extra cashier until you know you need it. For us, um, that was a parking attendant position. Um, that's something that we, we discovered we absolutely needed, but it wasn't until you know we had current staff doing it for a few weeks before we, we really needed it. So, um, Of course, store conditions are important. That's the other part about having enough staff. Um, we, we gave ours a, a fresh cone of paint inside. And you know, I think the, the maypole is a perfect example of efficiency because you can see in the middle there the weave gets pretty loose. You know? And that's the key about a store is that it's, it's actually going to be like that where it ebbs and flows as far as efficiency is concerned. And that's why you want to have the rock bottom level of staff. Um, we also were successful in maximizing our buying power 
by um, offering business accounts to local restaurants and other local businesses. Uh, when we increase our buying power, our cost goes down. So that's another component of financial health and competitive pricing. So second ends policy, products. Make sure you have a destination department. You have to have at least one thing that you are doing much better than your competitors. And for us, that's bulk herbs. Be the best at carrying local items. Uh, many of uh, your competitors, they can't buy products at the store level. And all their products require UPC codes. We can bring products in, slap a PLU sticker on it, uh, which means that local companies, they don't have to invest all this money in packaging before they test market their products. So co-ops are incredible incubators of young companies. Um, offer a basics program so you can compete with private label brands. Earth Fair and Ingalls are examples here. And we're screaming to the hilltops about our basics program. That's at the front door. But we, we're still not getting the news out there all the way. Uh, reset center store if it doesn't flow. Customers are actually used to a somewhat standard format. And uh, I think the single most significant thing that we did to battle price perception was to put our sales flyer in the local paper. And we customized it. And if you're an NCG co-op, the co-op deals program is amazing. As you saw, our buying power is formidable. Um, and we offer great deals. Uh, we felt like in this competitive market, we needed our name on the front. So we we're spending extra to customize it. And I think, um, you know, so this comes to community, the next ends policy, and, and marketing plays into a lot of how you're reaching out to your community. And so we do a lot of um, coupling our messaging with deals. Deals, deals, deals. But we also got the message, so we're not trying to pressure anybody. Um, marketing, uh, in order to pay for something like this, we took it from 1.2% of our sales up to 2.5% of our sales. And last year, we actually, um, it was actually 3.4. We overspent, and I think it was worth it. It was a good investment. Uh, we had a lot of stores open up last year. So I think the key to marketing, though, in the co-op world is to be real because we have authentic relationships with the community, and we need to talk about it. So we, we can also with co-ops, you know, everybody's there for a different reason. Many of your workers, staff, owners, you know, have this impression that the co-op is supposed to save the world. And you know, my thing is we need to run a great store, but we can help other people that are saving the world. So we don't have to do everything ourselves, and these partnerships are incredibly important. Um, you can enhance them with social media, networking on events. Um, you can offer 10% off days to the public at large. We decided to do it for everyone, not just owners. And that made a huge difference in our sales for those days. It also gives non-owners the taste of ownership. Um, maintain an email blast list. Send out all your promotions and events. Customer surveys at least twice a year. Make sure it's easy for um, customers to fill out uh, comment cards. Do owner orientations regularly. And I think most importantly, learn your customers' names and their kids' names. What's better than that? So next uh, ends policy, staff environment. Staff morale is huge. So we went living wage. And I, th I would recommend that for any co-op that can manage that. It's worth it. Also among the staff, you need a, a common dialogue. And we use the Zingerman's tools pretty extensively. They have a great customer service video. There's a series of three books. The first two um, are great. The second one especially features servant leadership, stewardship, beekeeping as it relates to management, and the 12 natural laws of businesses. Our employees got one of the 12 laws each month with their with their paycheck so we could use it as a dialogue point. Um, so you need to create and perpetuate a vibrant culture of inclusion and celebration. Staff picks in the newsletter, everybody's involved. Uh, management really needs to make staff training and advancement a priority. Education is our last ends policy. Offer classes, potlucks, and other events to set yourself apart from your competitors and provide a social outlet for your shoppers. Have a focus on educating 
uh, we started an annual event called the Urban Homesteading Fair, a perfect platform for um, educating in a fun environment. Another hot topic for us is GMOs. So um, whatever your hot topic is, um, if it is GMOs, you can become a participating retailer in the non-GMO project and offer their signs and brochures. But most of all, keep the public up to date with what you are doing and what's going on with co-ops internationally because we're actually a strong global force. So thank you. I'm proud to be among you. <laughs>